Welcome to the third lecture of microscopy series. In this video, we'll talk about the two photon microscopy. This section comes under the name uh, Methods in Biology. This is Unit 13 for CSIR net examination. So in this video, we'll talk about the principle of two photon microscopy, working principle of two photon microscope, application of two photon microscopy and the limitations of two photon microscopy. So the resources that you can use for this section is Pathfinder book set or Wilson and Walker book. Now, Wilson and Walker is more elaborate. Pathfinder book is more precise. Alternatively, you can go for the Nikon Microscopy U website where you can get enough information about the two photon microscopy or any other microscopy techniques. Now, among these book sets, you can use the Biophysics and Molecular Biology Techniques book, which is this one. And this particular uh, topic is included in the chapter six of Biophysics section, which starts from page number 89. Anyway, We'll look at the analytics first. This topic is included in unit 13. As I have mentioned earlier, the questions are asked in part B as well as in part C. The difficulty level is easy to moderate. Only application oriented or little bit of principle based questions are asked. In this video, we are going to discuss some of these questions. So stay tuned till the end. So let's talk about the two photon microscopy. Let me tell you that two photon microscopy is one variant of fluorescence microscopy. And now let's talk about the working principle. So working principle of two photon microscopy is based on the principle of fluorescence. I'm damn sure that you have watched the video on fluorescence. If you haven't, then the watch the uh, particular link is given in the description or you can find it in the I button. So go check it out first. Just to give you a brief summary, in any fluorescence microscopy, there is an excitation light which moves in through the objective. And when it goes through the filter cube, it has a particular wavelength or band of excitation, in this case, a blue light. And then it excites the fluorophore in the sample. And the fluorophore gets excited into a higher excitation state. When it relaxes, it emits the fluorescence and that is detected by a detector. This is the simple principle of fluorescence microscopy. And this is happening in a scale of 10 to the power minus seven to 10 to the power minus nine. Now, principle of two photon microscopy is a modification on this. Whatever we learned so far was a one photon excitation, or this is also known as one photon fluorescence. Whatever we know as fluorescence Zablonski diagram, it is known as a one photon fluorescence process. That means you excite the fluorophore, it gets into a higher excitation state, comes back and in this process emits fluorescent light. Or So this is one photon. Now let us describe the two photon process. So the two photon process is a bit different from one photon excitation. Instead of exciting it with one particular uh, photon, you excite with two photons and a combination of these excitation lead to uh, the jump into the excited state. So now we are exciting with two photons, which are quite uh, uh, like coincident in the temporal window. That means these two excitation beam are spaced as uh, low as 50 femtosecond apart. That means they are almost coincident. These two photon beams are almost coincident. Now that leads to the excitation, to the excited state. And when it relaxes, it again gives us fluorescence emission. Let me explain it into a, a better fashion. So let's say we are exciting GFP. We would be using the wavelength 488 nanometer. So this is one, foot, one photon fluorescence. But if we want to excite the GFP in a two photon mode, then we have to use an excitation wavelength, which is 920 nanometer. Now look at this particular thing. So when we use it with a 488 nanometer, the energy is high because the wavelength is low. Now when we would do it with 920 nanometer, the energy is low because the wavelength is high. We always have to remember this equation, E equal to HC by lambda. Higher the lambda, lower the energy, lower the lambda, higher the energy. Now, what is the benefit of this kind of illumination? Isn't it kind of like the roundabout? 
but we have to understand what is the benefit so first of all the chances of photo bleaching is low because we are hitting the specimen with a lower uh, energy light whereas in a one photon fluorescence the chances of photo bleaching is high and this matters for a live specimen or where the signal is very low now confocal microscopy has a typical problem i'll tell you the problem in details so when we image some specimen or fluorophores which are present in the surface confocal microscopy can detect it very nicely and the image is very sharp but imagine the fluorophores are present at the deeper portion of the surface several hundred microns deeper from the surface now when the light travels from the top portion to the bottom portion of the surface there is increased scattering and the scattering is kind of proportional to 1 by lambda to the power 4 now we can understand if we use a low wavelength light the scattering would be more right but if we use a higher wavelength light the scattering would be also low and two photon microscopy use infrared laser which has a wavelength higher than the normal uh, light light microscope or confocal microscope allows the resolution to be better or scattering to be low so let us compare epifluorescence confocal and two photon microscope together so here is a fluorescence dye and here we are imaging with the objective now in the wide field illumination lot of fluorophores would be excited maybe somebody in in the uh, plane of illumination and some other fluorophore which are not in the plane of illumination so the the illumination is pretty broad in confocal we can limit it down to a narrow waist and we can limit it down, down to a narrow volume but still there is a chance that there would be molecules present up and down the plane which would be excited by these fluorophores in two photon microscopy this particular illumination is restricted to a very narrow point why is so because any point which is on the top or in the bottom of the plane of focus might not get these two photon excitation simultaneously in order to see the fluorescence we have to have simultaneous illumination with these two photons if there is a time lag we are not going to see any fluorescence if they are roughly around 50 fm to second apart then they are almost coincident and we are going to see a fluorescence process that is why in two photon microscopy we get confocality for almost free let us try to explain this in better fashion so here is the two photon microscope and this particular fluorophore what you can see it's in the plane of focus so only this particular fluorophore is excited because two photons are kind of hitting this particular fluorophore simultaneously roughly 50 fm to second apart but other fluorophores that you see in the field they are not in the plane of focus so chances are they are not simultaneously illuminated by these two photons and this lag lead to no illumination so only the illumination is achieved when there is a coincident uh, hit of these two photons now we understand why they are um giving the higher resolution like a confocal microscope so we found two point to be very interesting one is the confocality can be achieved by two photon using this kind of like simultaneous hit by two particular photons and second thing is we observe that the scattering can be minimized we using confocal the scattering would be a big problem but when we use a infrared light the wavelength increases and the scattering is minimized now let's look at the anatomy of the microscope and learn about the light path so let's try to understand the anatomy so this is a microscope body this is a laser unit in this case a different laser is used i'll tell you in bit more details this is the stage controller lamp maybe for visualization purposes only we don't use it for image there is a processing unit which connects the software with the microscope and this is a computer screen where you see your images anyway the laser power is like kind of so this is a continuous wavelength you can achieve different different wavelength using this two photon laser it is tunable laser so in two photon microscope what happens is if we look at the light path so the laser comes out from the laser unit 
and this is infrared laser so generally we should not see it for visualization purposes i am showing it in a red diagram red line but in ideal scenario we should not be able to see this laser we can only understand the presence of laser with a phosphorescence screen so it goes through a couple of mirrors before that it goes through a pockel cell because these particular lasers are pretty intense and powerful the laser power has to be decreased and this device decreases the laser power to few microwatts the laser is present in terms of few milliwatts and it has been now reduced to microwatts then through the pockel cell it bounces back and forth through some mirrors and then it moves back of the microscope and in the back of the microscope there is a periscope with the help of this periscope it moves into the microscope body and travels through the objective and illuminates the specimen which is present in the sample holder and from the specimen the fluorescent light get gets into the detector and we can image the specimen and thereby we are getting the scanning of this specimen as shown here right now let's talk about the application of two photon microscopy first of all with two photon microscopy it is possible to image behaving animals in real time like it is possible to image what goes on the brain of a mouse while it is performing a behavior we have to obviously use a transgenic line which has genetically encoded calcium sensor or some kind of voltage sensor but using two photon we can achieve these kind of precise measurements so it is highly valuable for neuroscientists so in this context let me tell you we can achieve a depth more than 500 micron using a two photon microscope let's say one particular set of neurons are active which are in the very deep layer of these mouse brain we can use two photon microscopy to achieve this depth without compromising the resolution with a confocal microscope this is not possible with increase of depth in confocal microscope there would be a lot of scattering and the resolution would be poor so the resolution part is the biggest um advantage and the advantage in terms of the thick specimen when we talk about two photon microscope and this is a live example so here you can see we are imaging the calcium transients from the antenna of fruit flies these are genetically modified fruit flies so they encode a calcium sensor in subgroup of neurons so you can see in this uh, bright field image a portion of the antenna is visible which is highlighted in the uh, bigger image and we are measuring the odor response real time we put a puff of odor and we can understand how that changes the neuronal response you must be wondering the resolution looks super poor the image looks grainy how you are saying the resolution is improved so resolution always doesn't mean the spatial resolution resolution can also mean temporal resolution here we want to discriminate what uh, discriminate the temporal events that means how fast the transients are how their kinetics in time so that can be delineated in two photon microscopy anyway we can use genetically encoded calcium sensors like gcamp i have a different video on gcamp you can watch it in the i button so gcamp changes its conformation when it binds to calcium and it becomes fluorescent when it binds to calcium so whenever a neuron fires the gcamp response goes up and this principle can be used to understand neuronal activity in a two photon microscopy so we can compare the change in fluorescence over frames like this and that would give us a plot like this and the biggest advantage is using two photon microscopy combining it with calcium imaging we can record from we can record simultaneously from let's say hundreds of neuron with a patch clamp technique or which other electrophysiological technique it is possible to record from only one neuron at a time or let's say a handful of neuron at a time but here we can do it for several neurons simultaneously that is the biggest advantage from a perspective of neuroscientist using this two photon microscopy we can ask questions like whether the circuit activity is synchronous versus asynchronous the firing pattern over time can be understood using two photon microscopy combined with calcium imaging or voltage imaging 
So now I have given enough amount of overview about the working principle of two photon microscopy. So this is a quick summary of two photon microscopy. This tells us why two photon microscopy is specially useful for thick specimen. So take a look at it, take a screenshot. Anyway, let's practice some questions which are of CSIR pattern. In order to visualize a neuron which is situated at 5 mm depth in the brain, so neuroscientists should use which of the microscopy technique? Differential interference contrast, two photon imaging, confocal microscopy, super resolution microscopy. If you have understood the lecture properly, the correct answer is option B. Which of the following is uh, following regarding two photon microscopy is true? This microscopy technique utilizes a pinhole to cancel out focus out of focus light. It uses laser based illumination system. This is suitable for imaging thick specimen both B and C. The correct answer is option D. Both B and C are correct because obviously two photon uses infrared laser system that we have seen. That's correct. And this is suitable for thick specimens. We have also looked at it. So obviously option D is correct. The last question of the day, which of the following regarding two photon microscopy is false. The imaging depth of two photon microscopy is achieved by the usage of pinhole. It uses infrared laser, which are less phototoxic to live specimen. This is suitable for imaging thick specimen. The microscope uses femtosecond pulsed laser. You have to identify the false statement and please uh, comment it in the uh, comment section. So whatever the answer is, put it in the comment. Anyway, if you want more questions, the link would be updated in the description as I upload more videos on question answer practice. Get more notes and flashcards in my Facebook page. Also, you can follow me on Instagram. All the links are provided in the description. You can support this channel by clicking on the uh, bottom right corner super thanks option. You can start paying like 40 rupees and that much money is a lot of motivation for me. You can pay via U Paytm, PayPal, UPI, etc. Anyway, if you wish to connect to me, all my social media links are provided in the description. And also follow the Nerd Medic channel. The link is provided in the description. See you in the next video. Making each, the, each of these videos takes a lot of time, a lot of effort and a lot of reading. These are beyond the textbook uh, kind of lectures, right? And you won't find it in any other edtech platform. So please share this with your friend. All of these are free content and show some support by clicking on the like button, putting some impression in the comments. See you in the next video.